In the future world, environmental issues combined with nuclear pollution have led to a drastic drop in Earth's oxygen levels, from an original 27% to just 5%. In these conditions, human survival has been severely challenged. As time progressed, the oxygen content in the air eventually dropped to zero. Many people died from lack of oxygen, but a small minority managed to survive by constructing underground oxygen sanctuaries. Our male protagonist and his family are among those who survived this way. The male protagonist, a father, is an ecological engineer who had recognized the Earth's oxygen issues a year earlier. To ensure his family's survival, he built a sanctuary specifically designed as a refuge where his family could live. As time passed, the outside world turned into an apocalyptic landscape. Life continued this way until one day, the father, while tuning the machinery, discovered that the sanctuary's oxygen-producing capabilities were diminishing. Based on the rate of decline, he calculated that the oxygen machine would only be able to support two people in the future. Faced with this reality, the male protagonist decided to sacrifice himself. He left the sanctuary under the pretense of searching for supplies. Before leaving, he warned his wife and daughter not to trust any other survivors in the apocalyptic environment and to prioritize their survival above all else. With these final words, father left his home reluctantly and never returned. Mary, the daughter, was unaware of the dire situation. She continued to pray for her father's return and used a radio broadcast daily to try to speak with him. Unbeknownst to her, this act was setting the stage for imminent danger. As her father remained missing and supplies in the sanctuary dwindled, her mother had to wear an oxygen mask and take Mary outside to look for resources. They only had enough oxygen in their tanks for 40 minutes, so they had to act quickly. Mary, playful by nature, always had to be called back by her mother she reluctantly returned to their safe house each time. Being a huge admirer of her father, Mary followed in his footsteps and learned a great deal of technical knowledge, which she used to maintain the proper functioning of their sanctuary. Meanwhile, her mother experimented with growing plants to produce oxygen. Though safe, life inside the sanctuary became exceedingly dull as the days passed. Mary constantly wanted to go out and explore, but her mother always tried to prevent her. Even when they went outside, the mother closely watched Mary. One day, upon returning from an outing, they were startled to find two strangers at their doorstep. Mother and Mary immediately became cautious and hid behind an abandoned car to observe. Mother's oxygen tank started beeping at that moment, warning that only 20% of the oxygen remained, which frightened them into hiding. The woman from afar, Alice, heard the noise and followed the sound. Although Mary and mother moved to another hiding spot, their footprints betrayed their location. Alice, gun in hand, started searching around. Just then, her male companion shouted aloud after discovering an exhaust pipe above the sanctuary, realizing a hideout was below. Attracted by her companion's shout, Alice turned away, allowing mother and Mary to knock Alice down, grab the gun from the ground, and flee back to their sanctuary before Alice could catch up. They then sealed the door shut. Alice stood at the door, speaking into the surveillance camera, trying to communicate with Mary and her mother that she was not a threat but was seeking help. Alice revealed her identity, claiming that she and her group came from a survivor base 100 kilometers away, where their oxygen system had malfunctioned, and they had specifically come seeking the male protagonist's expertise. Alice professed to be an old colleague of the male protagonist, though Mary did not recognize her. Alice continued to try to gain mother's trust. As the standoff at the door lingered, Alice played her trump card by stating the full names of the male protagonist and Mary, hoping to prove her identity through this personal knowledge. Finally, swayed by Alice's emotional appeal and logical arguments, mother began to trust her. However, to be safe, mother instructed Alice and her male companion to leave their guns at the door and kneel at a distance. They complied obediently. Once satisfied, mother opened the door, collected the guns, and approached them with her gun drawn. Mother ordered Alice to tie up her male companion, then took control of Alice and started walking her back, planning to talk. Just as they reached the door, another man suddenly burst out from the side. He dived into the sanctuary but was immediately subdued by Mary and her mother, 
who swiftly shut the door. After this incident, mother's trust in Alice completely evaporated. Alice explained that the man was supposed to be on lookout duty, but no matter what Alice said, mother no longer responded. Seeing the situation escalate, Alice finally reveals her truth. In a desperate bid to save the people in their shelter, Alice and her male companion take extreme measures. The man pulls out an electric drill and begins drilling into the door. Mary sees this and quickly runs back inside to fetch an electromagnetic pulse device, which she uses to destroy the electric successfully saw in the man's hand. Alice is furious, but they do not give up. Alice then climbed to the rooftop and blocked the sanctuary's exhaust pipe, forcing Mother and her group to come out. With the exhaust pipe blocked, carbon dioxide couldn't be appropriately expelled and its levels inside the bunker started to rise rapidly. The system indicated that the oxygen inside the bunker would be depleted in about five minutes. Mother and Mary scrambled to find a solution. Mother left the bunker, crawled through the garage to the rooftop, and engaged Alice in a shootout. After pinning Alice down, Mother reopened the exhaust pipe to restore normal oxygen levels inside the bunker. Meanwhile, Alice shot at Mother, covering her male companion as he ran towards the bunker stairs. In a final move, Alice emerged, throwing away her gun to distract Mother, covering for her companion as he climbed the stairs and ambushed Mother from behind. Mother fought fiercely, and the companion initially failed to subdue her. At a critical moment, Alice rushed over and knocked Mother unconscious with the butt of her gun. Meanwhile, Jack, the other man bound inside the bunker, seized an opportunity to break free and grabbed Mary. Mary, relying on her remarkable combat skills, barely escaped Jack's grasp. However, at that moment, Jack picked up a gun from the ground and controlled Mary with its dark muzzle. He tied up Mary and ran to the door, trying to open it. However, Mary and Jack had damaged the bunker's system during their scuffle. By this time, the oxygen concentration inside the bunker was critically low. Before he could open the door, Jack collapsed, unconscious. With Jack down, Mary's situation looked grim. Outside, Alice and her group were forced to find another way to open the door. Two locks controlled the bunker's main entrance, a code and an access card, both indispensable. The mother knew the code but did not have the access card. Realizing the severity of the situation inside the bunker and desperate to save her daughter, mother, regardless of whether Alice was a friend or foe, immediately drove with Alice to a nearby junkyard. Under a wall, they found a weathered corpse, and it turned out to be none other than her husband. The mother had no time for grief as she retrieved the access card from her husband's body. Just at this critical moment, the car that the mother was driving suddenly lost power and stalled, and her oxygen supply was nearly depleted. Knowing she couldn't make it back, she handed the access card to Alice, and trusting her to return and save her daughter. During the drive there, the mother had sensed that Alice bore no malice. Alice was genuinely seeking help and respected the mother's decisions. Taking the access card, Alice ran back to the bunker. After a hurried journey, she finally arrived at the bunker's entrance. As she opened the door, she also managed to repair the bunker's system, restoring oxygen inside. When Mary saw Alice, she immediately asked about her mother. At this point, Alice wanted to return and rescue others, but the man stopped her. The two argued, and unexpectedly, her group pulled a gun on Alice, forcing her to dismantle the bunker's oxygen system to take it back to their shelter. Under the weapon's threat, Alice had no choice but to comply. Alice opened the oxygen generator and found that the machine was very worn and could barely support two people. By this point, Mary had realized why her father had left them, he had discovered this issue and chosen to give his wife and daughter a chance to survive. Upon hearing this, the man demanded that Alice find a way to replicate the oxygen machine. Unfortunately, the task was beyond Alice's capabilities, infuriating the man. He had spent a significant amount of food and water resources bringing Alice here over the past week, precisely to duplicate the oxygen generator, and her inability to do so was a bitter disappointment to him. In a fit of rage, the man shot Alice dead. One might wonder how they knew about the protagonist's bunker. The answer lies in Mary's radio broadcasts. 
they had picked up her signals and followed them to locate the bunker. Seeing how things unfolded, the man decided not to leave but instead to take over the bunker. Mary was left behind to specifically handle the repair and maintenance of the bunker's systems, as the oxygen generator alone required two people to operate. Meanwhile, her mother lay in the car, quietly awaiting death, believing her oxygen supply was being depleted. Unexpectedly, she did not die when the oxygen ran out. At that moment, she noticed a green plant not far away. The presence of the plant indicated there was oxygen. Taking a chance, her mother removed her oxygen mask, and the atmosphere had breathable air. Although the oxygen in the surrounding area was very thin, it was just enough to be usable. Realizing Earth's environment was gradually improving, the mother reorganized her equipment and refilled her oxygen tanks to return to the bunker. It's worth noting that only areas with green plants had traces of oxygen, so regions without greenery still lacked oxygen. At this moment, the bunker's battery system malfunctioned, plunging the entire base into darkness. The man was forced to release Mary to go out and fix it. Out of caution, he only gave Mary a 10-minute supply of oxygen. After fixing the battery, Mary saw her mother approaching, and they embraced tightly. Her mother instructed Mary to return to the bunker and trick the man into opening the door. However, unexpectedly, the man did not open the door as usual. Seeing this, her mother and Mary swapped oxygen masks. Mary then pretended to faint on the ground, luring the man outside. In the next moment, her mother emerged from the side, shot the man, and exploded his oxygen tank. Seizing the opportunity, the mother and Mary quickly escaped back into the bunker, leaving the man alone outside to struggle for his life. Unexpectedly, the man summoned his remaining strength and burst through the door just as it closed, leading to a chaotic struggle among the three. Ultimately, the man managed to gain control by picking up a shotgun. However, the oxygen level inside the bunker was rapidly depleting. The mother and Mary took the opportunity to hide in the attic and increase the hydrogen content in the oxygen retention device. During his pursuit, the man pulled the trigger and inadvertently fired a shot, which ignited the hydrogen in the bunker. The explosion killed the man and destroyed the oxygen system, but fortunately, the mother and Mary, hidden in the attic, were unharmed. Ultimately, the mother and daughter had no choice but to leave the bunker searching for a new home. However, with the Earth's environment gradually improving, they were hopeful it wouldn't be long before the planet returned to a more habitable state. It is a movie written by Doug Simon and directed by Stefan Bristol.